I've run many group programs where I have recurring events for the program and I need the members to know when they are, especially if I schedule new ones or remove old, you know, remove ones that are no longer applicable, that the calendar needs to update automatically. Their calendar needs to update automatically, whether they use Google or Apple calendar or, or something else. So the way to do it is to create a shared Google calendar. I find that that's the most um, convenient way of going. So I'm going to go and show you in this video how I do it. I've been doing this for years, and uh, this is the, the method that seems to work well right now. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, so go to Google Calendar and scroll down. So you know, scroll down on the left side until you see other calendars and click on the plus button. Okay, so and click on create new calendar. And then this is where you can, you know, uh, the greatest program group the greatest group program ever, okay? And then uh, don't worry about the description. I, I don't find that, but you can put whatever you want. Time zone, um, I would say put the time zone that is most, uh, you know, I would say this, put your own time zone because it'll be less confusing to you when you schedule things. And the the time, the, the, the events will be automatically placed into the clients and the members time zones when they open the calendar. So put this in your own time zones, easier for you, and then click on create calendar. Okay, once you've done that, you can now, uh, once it's finished doing that, click on configure, okay? Click on the configure button. If for some reason you, you know, you X this out and it, were, it went away, the way you can get to configuring the calendar, which is where you share the calendar, is uh, when you go back to your, um, you know, when you go back to your Google Calendar homepage, on the left-hand side will be the calendar that you just created. And click on the three dots and click settings and sharing. Uh, that's the same thing as if you had clicked on configure earlier or, you know, um, but you can always come back to settings and sharing. I can scroll down now. And what you do is um, you should probably change this to, uh, um, uh, let's see here, do not show invitations, click okay. That's better because if somehow, however, some spammer starts inviting you, you don't want that to populate in your group calendar. So do not show. And then this one is what I recommend all of you do. I, I didn't recommend it in the past, but after having some research, I'm now recommending this last year or two, I've been doing this. I would recommend make available to the public. Let me, let me do this again. The, and it sounds scary. Like, oh my gosh, are people going to find my calendar through Google search? I have researched a bit of this and the answer is no. Even if you make it a public Google calendar, uh, no one on the internet that I've researched has been able to find public Google calendars unless they are like really popular or, or unless they have embedded the public, they have embedded the Google calendar on a public web page, which you're probably not going to be doing because this is most of you are doing like private group programs. So even with a private group program, I click on make available to the public. Okay, click on this. It says, we'll make it available to the entire world, including via Google search. That's nonsense because again, I've researched this and it works only if you embed the calendar on a public web page, which we're not going to do. So are you sure? Yes. Click okay. All right. And then uh, basically the question is, uh, when someone adds the calendar, can they see all event details or only free busy? Well, you want them, if it's especially the group program, you want them to be able to see the event details. You want them to see what the Zoom link is and what the you know, description of each event is. So you definitely want them to see all details. If they only see free busy, then they have no idea what the events are about. So click see all event details. That should be default. And then simply click on get shareable link. Click get shareable link, copy link. And uh, I will show you what this looks like uh, when I go there and add it. Uh, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll just copy the link for now. But before I, by, I move on, I just want to show you here down here, if you want to have other administrators for your program be able to add events or manage the events, then you, you need to click add people in groups and add them to be able to, to, to make changes or manage sharing and things like that. But otherwise you don't have to do, don't worry about the event notifications and, um, and anything else. Uh, in terms of allowing people to add to Apple calendars, I will give you another tutorial below this video that shows you how to, how to create it so that um, people can add it. And by the way, the other tutorial, I said, don't make it public, but I, I've changed my mind and I, that's how I do it now. I make it public uh, and it'll, it'll still work the same. So 
check out the other tutorials below this video for sure. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what it does now when, when someone goes to that particular link. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what happens if I go to that link, the get shareable link, right? Um, basically, give me one second here. Basically, it says add, add calendar, okay? The greatest program ever, whatever. Um, and if I click add, then all the events from the calendar that I've created in the other screen will be added here. And going forward, if I add any more events, the person who has added the calendar will see them added in real time or see other events removed if, if needed. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other tips for others who are needing to create group Google calendars, you can go ahead and comment below. Thanks. Thanks as, a, as a reminder, uh, I have other tutorials uh, related to this in the description below this video. So be sure to check those out as well. And for those who are wondering, well, why make it a public calendar versus private? I just have noticed that it's easier to share it with people, especially people who aren't logged in to their Google Calendar. Um, you know, if they have the link, then they're able to see it. Now, I, by the way, this is important as well. If you put private group information into the calendar, like Zoom links should definitely be private. If it's totally public, you're going to get trolls and Zoom bombers coming to your Zoom call, which is a bad thing. I've had experienced that before. So if you decide to make it a public thing, which is how I do it, make sure that the links within your events are, um, you know, make sure you tell all your group members, please do not share this link. Of course, keep it extremely private because all this private information we have. So do not share it anywhere. As long as people don't share that link, no one else is going to find it. Now, if, if it's a larger group program, and there's a risk that someone might not understand something and share the link. What I do is for my e group events, instead of putting Zoom links in the description, I put the link that leads them into my private group platform, that particular page that they have to log into to find the Zoom link. So that's kind of how I circumvent the fact that just in case it goes public, no trolls can find my Zoom link because they have to click a link and log into their private course platform to find the Zoom link there. So that's one way of uh, you know of doing it. But otherwise, I do find that you know if I want to share with you know, Apple Calendar people and other folks, it seems like making a calendar public it just is smoother. Um, but you can feel free to to experiment first with not making a public. Try to get all your group members to add it if there's some issue then you might want to come back and try making it public. So thank you for asking.